Has the world gone crazy? <laughs> yup. And it's going to get crazier. Let me tell you what we can do about it here in just a moment. Let me read for you first a thank you letter to you. Thank you to everyone who is supporting us. I think it's a miracle that I can do this professionally. And it's all because you followed God's leading to support us. Thank you. So what do we do as the world gets crazier? Because it's going to get crazier. These are the end times. And Jesus talked about it. Talked about all the wild things that are be going on just before the return of the Son of Man. But what can we do about it? Ready? Here you go. Pray this prayer. Lord, stamp eternity on my eyes. Yep. So I believe God wants eternity stamped on all of our eyes today. Why? Because we need to see the truth. And we need to see everything through the colored glasses of eternity. Lord, stamp eternity on my eyes. When I see the news, Lord, stamp eternity on my eyes. When I see my family, Lord God, stamp eternity on my eyes. When I see the people around me, oh God, stamp eternity on my eyes. I remember we were in London just recently, and there was a million people there for the London Marathon. As I looked around, I saw people with new eyes. I saw each individual one as somebody that Jesus loves and died for. Boy, that changes my perspective on everybody that I see. When I go to the grocery store, when I'm traveling, when I see people that I might not understand, I know that God loves them and sees them through the blood of Jesus. If only they, they would receive him. So God, stamp eternity on my eyes. Listen, what the Supreme Court recently did has eternal ramifications. Yes, it does. America has not been blessed in the last 50 years or so, but I believe the curse has been lifted. God, stamp eternity on my ears. Think about the eternal implications of what you hear. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, you know who you are, and I'm talking to me. Jonathan Edwards, great preacher in the early 1700s. Matter of fact, he was part of the great, the first great awakening in the United States in the early 1700s, where hundreds of thousands of people came to know Jesus, and their lives were forever changed. It was a powerful spiritual revival, which led to the formation of of the United States of America. Think about that. Boy, we need a revival like that today. And I'm praying for it. And I hope you are too. But what Jonathan, Ed Jonathan Edwards prayed this. He said, Lord, stamp eternity on my eyes. And that led to him preaching some of the best revival messages ever. And showing people their need to come to Jesus, to come to God, that everything else on this earth will pass away, but one day we'll stand before God, loving God, judging God. Yeah, it's very true. So we live in a culture that places great emphasis on the here and the now. Yet God's word admonishes us to live our lives on earth with a view of life after earth. Follow me? Some great people of history had some thoughts about eternity. You want to hear them? Yeah, I thought you might. St. Augustine. It's St. Augustine's prayer was that Christ might find him either praying or preaching when Jesus Christ returned. That's good prayer. John Tillotson said, He that provides for this life but takes no care for eternity is wise for a moment, but a fool forever. Noah Webster, brilliant man, 
who wrote a little thing called, you know, the dictionary. He was asked, what's the greatest thought that you've ever had? He said, I've thought about many things, but the most awesome, the most terrifying, the most shattering thought I've ever had is my personal accountability to God one day. Noel Webster. Martin Luther. I love Martin. He's awesome. He said that on his calendar there are only two days. Today and that day. Wow, what a way to live. Lord, stamp eternity on my eyes. Let's get a little perspective. How long is eternity? I heard a preacher say one time that if a little migratory bird were to fly from North America after picking up a little grain of sand from one of the beaches and fly all the way to South America during the migratory season and deposit that grain of sand on the beaches of South America. And then when it, seasons, when it was a season to return, if that bird picked up another grain, a different grain, and flew all the way to the North American beaches, uh, you know, the, yeah, north, and dropped it, by the time that little bird had transferred all the sand from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere and southern, southern hemisphere to the northern he I'll get it, northern hemisphere, eternity would only just be beginning. Wow, what a concept. Page two. I'm feeling the letter of the Lord to encourage you, to tell you, to admonish you, to live with the final judgment in mind. The Bible says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one might receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. And Hebrews 9.27 says this, it's appointed for men to die once. And after this, the judgment. True. So there are two judgments you need to understand. The one for the Christian and one for the unbeliever. For the Christian, the judgment will, will not be for punishment of sin because Christ, Jesus, bore our punishment on the cross. Amen. And there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Instead, the judgment with a Christian will face is to have the quality of his or her life judged. Now, this is why the message is so important today about looking at looking at everything from an eternal view, from what's going to happen after we leave this planet. It's really important because this this life, it's like that. You know, the book of James says, what is our life? It's but a vapor that appears for a little while, then passes away. But after we leave the planet, and for those of you who are believers, and those of you who get to be in, in paradise, in heaven with Jesus, those days will go on and on and on and on. I heard a preacher say one time that uh, the Lord spoke to him and said that one day that as we live through the you know, time after time in eternity. And that he said, we'll talk about the things of earth. We'll rejoice over the victories, but then we'll go on. And he said, he believed the Lord was saying that someday the things we do here will just become a memory. And then an archive in some distant record someplace, because we're going to continue living and we're going to live powerful, wonderful, amazing lives with God, our father, the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit. What an amazing, amazing thought. So the scripture says, if any man builds upon this foundation, which is Jesus using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay or straw, his work will be shown for what it is because the day will, re will bring it to light. It'll be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each man's work. If what he has built survives, he will receive his reward. If it's burned up, he'll suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, but only as one escaping through the flames. Every time I read this verse, I think of myself, I think of a Christian, you know, uh, standing before the judgment seat of Christ, which is more a reward uh, ceremony as well as having your works tested but if we do nothing if we just build wood hay and stubble in this life and and it's our works are judged with fire 
but we come through that it, it's i picture this guy standing there with just a little wisp of smoke coming off the top of his head he has nothing but he's there well, you know what i don't want to go to heaven without anything i want to bring people with me i want you to go with me we've had you know we've had several people you know write and uh, testify that they received jesus but you know i learned a long time ago working with charles and francis hunter they'd send out like ten thousand letters for appeal for you know support the ministry they'd get one percent back and that was good and out of that one percent it was enough so if i've just got a few or a dozen people say to me i've prayed and received jesus i wonder how many hundreds or thousands out there of you have prayed as a matter of fact you need to do that right now if god's calling you you feel the love of god asking you to come unto me all you that labor are heavy laden and i'll give you rest come take my yoke upon you and learn of me for i am meek and lowly of heart my way my burden is light my way is easy so come to jesus right now they call it a come to jesus moment they use it lightly but it's so important you know the bible says in romans 10 9 and 10 that if you believe in your heart that god raised jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth jesus as lord you shall be born again you'll be saved you'll have eternity as your eternal destination i'm sure you want that i want you to pray with me right now you know get alone if you have to you know pause for a moment but then come back and pray with me i want you to pray something like this the same prayer that i prayed when i heard the good news i prayed heavenly father pray this with me heavenly father i believe you sent jesus to die on the cross and shed his blood to forgive me of my sins i receive jesus i receive the blood i receive the forgiveness of sins jesus is my lord <laughs> amen i know i skipped kind of right to the end and i got a couple more verses for you but right now i want you to think about writing to me and let me know i know I know because statistics prove it out. There are more than just a few, maybe the dozen that have said to me over the past few years that they received Jesus. If you did, please write to me. I'd love to share that with the rest of the world so we might rejoice with you. Won't you do that? Amen. And so finally, for the non-Christian, the person who never trusted Jesus for salvation, there's to come a dreadful and terrible and fierce judgment for sin this judgment will result in eternal separation from god think about it separation from family separation from light separation from love separation from from god it says if anyone's name was not written in the book of life was not found written in the book of life he was thrown into the lake of fire so you don't want to go there we need to keep preaching heaven real and hell hot because it's true and we wouldn't be faithful if we didn't tell you the truth hallelujah so once you see the reality of hell we can understand why paul said since then we know for then we know what it is to fear the lord and we try to persuade men so i want to finish with this just a few words of a sermon that was delivered at the Metropolitan Tabernacle on a Thursday evening. I guess I had this written down. June 3rd, 1875. Yeah. By C.H. Spurgeon. He said, some of you will soon go where the Sabbath bell is never heard. You will go where Sabbaths themselves are all unknown except as dreadful memories of shamefully neglected privileges you know missing an opportunity like this for instance you will go where no minister will tell you of grace and mercy and pardon bought with the blood you'll go where never you'll hear the music of those charming bells free grace and dying love the very opposite sound to that will you ever will ever grate upon your ears there will be no godly teacher there to urge you to seek the lord in your youth and to give him your heart while you're yet young There'll be no loving parents there with tears, sighs, 
pious example, striving to lead you to Jesus, there'll be no faithful preacher there earnestly endeavoring in simple language to tell you the old, old story and to point you to Christ upon the cross only a little while and there should be no Bible for you to read, no mercy seat to where you can go, no promise that you can plead, no blood of Jesus in which you can ask to be washed. For you will be beyond the line of hope and beyond the reach of mercy. Oh, don't go there. Don't go there. Give your heart to God. And for you believers, hear this earnest message today. Pray, God, stamp eternity in my eyes. Let the next few moments of your life be in the context of the next life. May you get up tomorrow and think, Lord, stamp eternity on my eyes. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, let this message resound over all the world. Father, I believe I receive the grace of Jesus going out and people receiving him and becoming just like the rest of us, the rest of us believers who are sinners who are forgiven and looking forward to grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, write to me, like I said, and tell me, you know, how this has affected your life. I know it affected my life, and I preached it recently to a local congregation, and they said that was the most passionate and the most moving message they had heard in years. I pray that it is for you too. So don't forget, share this message with people. Like it, if you like it comment and go ahead and subscribe because we want to keep teaching you the word of god god's called me to do it i'm going to keep on doing it and no man can live just by your food but you need the word of god so keep coming back won't you and receive the teaching of his holy word